Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to explain about the principles of pseudo random gen pseudo random number generation. In my channel, I upload tech related videos ranging from Flutter, Python, encryption tutorials to tech tricks every week. So, ready to join me in this journey or curious to learn more? Then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to turn on the notification. Also, don't forget to like the video. Now, hoping that you have subscribed, let's continue. So, when we need to generate a random number, we need to consider these three properties mainly. So, first one, like uh, for example, if you have to say that a particular sequence is a random number, then we should uh, see that it has the following three conditions. So, let's see. So, the first... Uh, the first property which we should have is unif uniform distribution. That is, uh, for example, if you are generating a sequence which consists of uh, bits uh, like a 0 and 1, then you should uh, take care that the number of zeros should be approximately equal to number of 1s. So, for example, if you have a random uh, number sequence as 1, 1, 1, and then one and then once again zero zero here you can see that uh, like uh, we have one like more number of times than zero and it is not even approximately equal to the number of zeros so in such cases i uh, will say that it is not random the second condition uh, which we need to check is the independence what does independence mean is that you shouldn't be able to drive to derive a subsequence from the other numbers so for example uh, suppose you are generating a random number and you know that it consists of sequence like what you one two three four and then five uh, ignore that so here uh, we know that this is a part of a sequence and it looks random because none of the numbers are being repeated and like it looks random unless you know that there is a pattern but since we can easily notice that there is some kind of pattern in this, we can obviously guess the next uh, digits in this sequence. So thus we can say that this is not independent. So even this, uh, if we find any patterns in our, in our sequence, then we can say that it is not random. So we can't check everything manually. So there are some tests which can check if uh, if the given sequence is uniform distribution or not and similarly for independence we don't have any tests but instead uh, we have tests which check if if the particular sequence isn't independent so when we apply a large number of such tests on a number and like and the result turns out that uh, you can be confident enough that the number is independent what is what it means that like you have applied a large number of tests on the number and all of those uh, tests or majority of those test results that like this is not an independent uh, sequence then you can go for it so uh, the next the next property which we need to check is unpredictability so what it means that like in applications such as reciprocal authentication or stream ciphers a uh, number should not only be statistically random but also successive numbers of sequence must be unpredictable so for example like in stream cipher uh, so what is a stream cipher is that in that the uh, the key which you use is of the same num uh, number of bits as of the plain text so for example, you are generating, uh, you have a plain text of uh, 64 bits, for example, and you are generating uh, like a key. And suppose you have a bit like one, you have the key first four uh, bits or first four digits as one, two, three, four. And now uh, like we still need to produce about 60 bits here to form the key. So in such cases, we can see that we can easily determine what will come next based on a particular subsequence. So this should not happen. Uh, this is what is called as unpredictability. So now let us see what is TRNG, PRNG and PRF. 
so like uh, if the number of bits which we want to generate as a key is small then we can do it manually but even if we do it manually there is no guarantee that the particular sequence will be random so we have developed uh, some algorithms so let's see cryptographic applications like uh, typically make use of these algorithmic techniques uh, to generate random number but the algorithms which are used are deterministic and since they are deterministic the sequence which is produced by those algorithms are not statistically random but if our algorithm is good then the produced sequence will uh, pass through enough number of tests and such numbers are called as pseudo random numbers and let us see what does the true random numbers mean a uh, trng stands for a uh, true random number generator so what happens in this is like this is a kind of generator which will generate like uh, the true random number or the real random numbers so in this in order to generate such numbers it takes input as a source which is effectively random so in order to generate random numbers it will take input which is totally random so this source is also called as entropy source let me show you the diagram here okay so this source uh, like this source is called as entropy source which is uh, shown here and it is written as source of true randomness so what this source might consists of is that it may include the keystroke timing the mouse movements uh, or something related to the environment of computer and also it may include additional processing so that uh, like there is no bias in the source so here you can see that we have a entropy source and then uh, we apply an algorithm uh, for example it may be conversion to binary and then finally random bit stream is generated so in this uh, there is one problem uh, you can say it as a advantage or a disadvantage so when it comes to stream cipher the number of uh, bits like uh, given here is equal to the number of bits as the output so if you want to generate the keys for uh, small applications which require a small a bit small uh, less number of bits as key then you can use trng but if we have to generate a key which is very long then you can't use trng beca because it will become tedious work so now let's see what is prng mean so prng is pseudo random number generator and in this what we take is like the input is a fixed value called seed so every time we provide a value which is called as a seed and it produces output bits using a deterministic algorithm so here we will use deterministic algorithm and this will produce pseudo random bit stream so for example once we have taken seed as 0 and after that we have some algorithm which will produce a uh, the output like 1011 so in one go it will produce this output so now we have to generate a 64 bit key for example then what we'll do is we'll provide the output of this as the feedback or the input to the same algorithm once again so once again this will be processed and it will produce a random numbers random numbers so this continues and goes on until uh, like uh, the required number of key is gen a uh, required number of bits is generated so this is what a uh, prng does so it has a disadvantage that a person who knows this algorithm and the seed like he can produce the entire bit stream because as i had shown uh, in this step that it is easy to uh, analyze the entire thing an algorithm that is used to produce an open ended sequence of bits is called prng so this is the bookish definition uh, which you can remember if you want to so now we have prf so what is prf it is used to produce pseudo, pseudo random string of bits of fixed length 
So in this, what we provide as input is seed plus some context specific value. For example, we can use user ID, Facebook ID or something like that. So basically both PRNG and PRF are same, except that here we produce, uh, uh, this is used to produce pseudo random strings of fixed length. But here it you can produce any number of bits using this PRNG. So that's it for this video. In next video, I'll talk about the requirements or the various uh, various properties which are which which need to be checked while designing a PRNG. If you like my video, don't forget to su subscribe and like. Thank you.